Hi, my name is Josh Zander. I'm the host teaching professional for MySmart Golf and teaching professional at Stanford University Golf Course. Today I want to talk about the release in the golf swing. And there are two basic releases that I see, especially out on the PGA Tour. One I call the roll release, and the other one I call the stable release. I'm going to show you both of them above the ground first. The first one will be the roll release. So I swing the club back, and as I swing it through, you see my right arm roll over my left, and the club face goes from an open to square position, and it closes as it comes through. That's a roll release. The second kind of release I'm going to talk about today is what I call the stable release. The stable release has that name because the club face is more stable through impact. What I'm going to do now is make my backswing, then I'm going to bow my left wrist and then move the handle around. Notice how the club face is not rolling from open to close, it's staying stable and I'm just turning through to the finish. First I'm going to talk about the roll release. This is the most common release taught in golf today. You've probably heard of the toe up to toe up drill. That's where your instructor says to you, take it back and make sure the toe is up in the air, and then take it through and get the toe up on the other side. It looks like this, toe up on this side, toe up on this side. What's happening there is the club face is going from an open position, notice if I bring that down to impact, that's way open. It's going from an open to a closed position, you can see that's very closed, in a very short amount of time, kind of from waist high to waist high. Now you can see where that type of roll release, where the right arm rolls over the left, requires a lot of timing. Now what happens from the top of the backswing is the player will pull down with the lead arm, as a righty it'll be pulling down with my left arm, at this point the handle will start to slow down and the right arm will fire past and close the club face. So it's going from open to close right here around impact. Now that's a very timing intensive kind of release. So what most good players do who have a roll type release is they will choose either to fade the ball or draw the ball, not necessarily hit a straight one. The reason they might want to fade the ball or draw the ball is simply to take some of the timing out. For example, if I just hold the club in my left hand and put the club in front of me, notice that face is open. If I hold the club in my right hand and put it in front of me, notice the face is closed. So if I want to use the roll type release and make sure I'm fading the ball, I'm going to pull that handle down and let it roll later. That'll be a little bit more of an open club face and give me a fade ball flight. If I want to hook the golf ball, I will go ahead and close the club face sooner, get it more in line with my right arm, and that'll close the face and help me draw the golf ball. One of the best players in the world who uses the roll type release is Phil Mickelson. A few years ago he decided that he wasn't driving it as straight as he wanted to, so he was going to go to a fade ball flight, and for him that meant his lead arm was going to pull a little bit longer and the roll was going to happen a little bit later. Now let me talk to you about the stable release. The stable release is one where if you think about the club in this position which is very square, notice how the club head is above the shaft. You can see it from here, it's above the shaft. Now when I take it back, you can see the club head is no longer above the shaft. That's because the club face is open at the top, which is correct. We want an open club face at the top of the backswing. When you start coming down, you are going to bow your left wrist. I've just bowed it. What's happened? I now have the club head above the shaft. Now I simply move the handle around and turn my body and I've squared the club face. There is no rolling going on here. There is turning and moving the handle with a bowed wrist. As I come down, you're going to notice that I am not toe up. The leading edge here is parallel to my spine angle because I have bowed my wrist. Notice this is happening from the top of the backswing to halfway down. 
So now from here to impact, I simply keep moving the handle around and turn my body. And now on the way through, you're going to see again the leading edge at the same angle as my spine angle. The club head has remained very stable. The club head has stayed very square through impact. This is a better type of release if you're looking to hit a very straight golf ball. Now let me warn you, if you use a stable club face release, do not ever stop the handle. Keep the handle moving. Do not ever stop turning. You must keep turning. You must keep the handle moving if you want to make sure that the club face is going to stay stable and square through the impact zone. If at any point the handle stops, we're into a roll release. If at any time your body stops, we're into a roll release. So make sure as you're coming down, you bow that wrist and it's bowed before you get to waist high and then keep the handle moving and the body turning and I've got a very square club face. The player you'll see on the PGA Tour right now probably has the best stable release in the game is Sergio Garcia. He's also known as one of the best ball strikers out on the PGA Tour. This is the release that Ben Hogan used to talk about as well when he talked about supinating that wrist. That bowing of that wrist helps to stabilize and lock that club head into place. So all you have to do now is turn through impact and keep the handle moving. So find the release that works for you and make sure that you're paying attention to the fundamentals of each release. They're both very effective, but they're both very different. For the best shot tracking and game analysis resource on the web, go to www.mysmartgolf.com.